Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasy Pros Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Harris. You can find me on Twitter at DanHarris80. It is Friday, so we're going to be doing Dan and Kyle in the morning, breaking down every game for the Week 11 slate. But first, as we always do, let's start by talking to Dr. David Chow. You can find him over on Twitter at ProFootballDoc and his great website, ProFootballDoc.com. Doc, thank you for uh, (laughs) squeezing us in, as always, on a busy Friday for you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I really appreciate how you juggle with me between surgery, kids, this, that, the other, and all the different plates we got in the air. But thank you. Oh, don't worry about it whatsoever. Let's get right into it. Let's start with last night, uh, the game against the uh, the Cardinals against the Seahawks. You saw Kyler Murray get banged up early on in the game. He looked like he was getting treatment on his shoulder. Not sure his throws looked quite as crisp as usual, but he did finish out the game. Now we're hearing it might be a sprained AC joint. They obviously have a little extra time before their next game. Do you expect his availability to be in question or for there to be any negative effects on him going forward? I think he will be available. I think he is likely to be limited in practice. and I think he's going to be less than 100% like he was last night, but he will play and be available. We said in-game early on at ProFootballDoc.com, we thought it was an AC joint sprain, and even my little Periscope halftime injury chat that he would continue and finish the game with that AC joint sprain, which he did. On very similar injury to Sam Darnold, who's missed time. Sam Darnold would finish the game, and then the Jets chose not to play him because he wasn't at full at practice. And, you know, even this week, he was ruled out on Monday coming off a bye. But the Cardinals approach it differently. Kyler Murray's their guy. They know an 85% Kyler Murray is still way better than what else they have. And uh, they're okay playing Kyler at a little less than 100%. So I'm fully confident that Murray will be there in uh, 10 days from that Thursday game. All right, how about Christian McCaffrey? We talked about him before in the past. He's not going to play this week. They have this weird schedule where you have they're going to play week 12, but then they have a bye in week 13. I mean, I, I think it seems more like team player decision at this point. Sounds like he probably could play through it if he had to. But do you think, just generally speaking, that he's going to be back next week or given the fact that there's a bye in week 13 that they'll probably hold him out until week 14? Uh, which player you cut out for one Christian second. McCaffrey. Oh, sorry, Christian, Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Yeah, that's what, yep. what I thought you said. Well, yep. all along, I've been suggesting that uh, Christian McCaffrey would miss time, right? We've talked about it, right? Yep. He could play through with his AC joint spring, but it's part of, I think, the Panthers not to burn out their star running back. So I think he could play next week as well, but I'm sort of thinking the stop gap is wait past the week 13 by to really make sure he's 100 percent. no question if the panthers were contending and playing for something they would have already played him all right fantasy manager just gonna have to wait and see on that one out there is some concern about Devonte adams here who you know injured his ankle a little bit last week left came back then he missed practice this week he did practice on Friday here today, and it sounds like he should be good to go. Do you think that he's going to have any limitations here in this game this weekend? Well, do I think he's going to be 100%? No. I mean, he finished the game at less than 100%. Do I think he's going to have any limitations where he's not going to be productive? No. We're talking about Devontae Adams, right? He caught a touchdown after that ankle injury before, and uh, I think he can continue. Okay, let's talk about a few quarterbacks here because we've got a lot of quarterbacks with injury. Let's start with Drew Brees. He's got several fractured ribs and a collapsed lung. The time frame that has been floated has been maybe two to three weeks, maybe longer. Realistically, when do you think he's going to be able to return to the field? Realistically, the ribs recover reliably somewhere between two and four weeks. The lung is the bigger question mark. He is not going to play in December. He will play. Sorry, he was not going to play in November. He okay. will play in December. It's a matter of when he will play in December, mid or late. When he does come back, I think he will be 100% and show no ill effects. And so that's the good news. But uh, we have to let the lung sort itself out. It'll be a couple of weeks at least for Drew Brees. How about Teddy Bridgewater and his sprained MCL? He's questionable this week, actually. And there was, you know, certain positive reports, but it certainly didn't sound like he was going to be able to suit up prior to today again. And again, they have this bye week in week 13. So what do you think about his prognosis? 
I'm down on Teddy Bridgewater playing this week. I was down on him playing this week starting Sunday night at our line mover segment in uh, profootballdoc.com. He's got an MCL sprain that he could play through. He's been limited in practice. But, you know, Big Ben's played through. Teddy Bridgewater's not soft. I think the team's going to make a decision to not play him this week for several reasons. Number one, just like Christian McCaffrey, he's their future, so they don't want to push him too hard. Number two, he's not as familiar with the Panthers' offense, right? He's still relatively new. It's not Big Ben who's been there for years or decades, miss practice all week and go play Sunday, no big deal, right? So they don't want to expose Teddy like that. And Teddy's mobility is still a big part of his game, whereas Big Ben has throttled it down. So for all of those reasons, I've said all week, I do not believe uh, that Teddy Bridgewater will play this week. How about Matthew Stafford? He's got a partial tear in the ligament in his thumb. They are expecting him to play, so it doesn't sound like it's really about his availability, more about his effectiveness. Do you think that he's going to be able to perform as he basically would if he were otherwise healthy? I think so. I mean, he finished off the second half of the game with a thumb injury. It's a partial tear, so unlike Drew Brees last year, it doesn't require surgery, and he should be able to grip, spin the ball, and play through. I have full confidence in Matthew Stafford. All right, let's finish up with a couple of running backs who we talk about every week, and it's Joe Mixon. So, look, he's already been ruled out this week. Nobody has any info. Is it, I guess, is this just normal and possible for a foot sprain? Is it, could he miss the rest of the season at this point? He wasn't even practicing at all. Well, I mean, uh, Dan, I mean, I know you're not rubbing it in, but I feel like you're rubbing it in because Joe Mixon was one that I was like, I think he should be okay. And, you know, clearly the Bengals don't know either because they didn't put him on injured reserve. I mean, he's been out more than three weeks now. So I don't know that anybody knows what's really going on with Joe Mixon. But I will say this. Anytime things don't make sense from the outside, from the inside, they do. We just don't know what that's the whole story is yet. And so we'll just have to wait and see. All right, last guy here, Austin Eckler. Again, we talked about it last week. I just want to, you know, reiterate because I felt like you thought he will return in December. He's obviously fantasy managers are getting excited. We're in week 11. Realistically, what are you thinking here? Week 12, week 13, the first week of December? Or what What do you think? I think the first week of December, I think he's teased a lot of fantasy managers with that video. Sure, he ran great, but it was sped up video. But that's not football activity. And, you know, it was a partial tear of the tendon off the bone. It was a bad injury. We talked about how Nick Chubb was going to beat him back. And they were the same week. And Chubb had the longer timeline estimate initially. And Chubb has beaten him back. You know, I, I responded to Austin Eckler's tweet of, of, you know, that he'd be back soon. I said, yeah, December's right around the corner. That's pretty soon. So I still yeah. stick to December. Absolutely. All right, Doc, I can hear in the background. I know you got a lot going on, so I don't want to keep you. Just remind everybody very quickly where they can find all of you and your work. Uh, it's uh, profootballdoc.com and profootballdoc at Twitter. And yes, that's my three-year-old Devin making her <laughs> podcast debut. <laughs> I love it. My kids pop on all the time. I really appreciate it, Doc. We'll talk to you again next week. And in the meantime, we will now shift over to Dan and Kyle in the morning for week 13. Oh, sorry. Dan and Kyle in the morning for week 11. All right, guys, it's time for Dan and Kyle in the morning. Let's bring in Yates here. Of course, you can find him on Twitter at KyleYNFL. Yates, how are you doing on this fine Friday morning? I'm good, man. It is a interesting week for me uh, with being out on dad duty for some of the week here. Uh, my son's daycare, I mentioned it earlier, my son's daycare was closed with COVID-19, a uh, positive COVID-19 test. And so I've been on dad duty. So I wasn't on the Wednesday podcast. I think that was my first one that I missed yep. like all season long, missed a couple of live streams. So it's just been a weird week. I don't think I, ta- I don't think I've talked to tags in person. I mean, I messaged him on Slack, but I don't think I've talked to him in person, which is weird pretty good week for you then all right way to go i know yeah i didn't talk to tags i mean it's, it's, it's a plus Brent, when i renegotiate my contract i'm going to have a limit on how often i can talk to tags for sure well i'm glad you were <laughs> able to make it for this podcast because dan and kyle in the morning without kyle kind of sucks so i'm really glad that you're here at least for this one so you guys know the drill yates and i are going to go through every single game from this weekend but first as you can probably tell by the fact that we laugh a lot yates and i have a pretty good relationship and we have the same with tags uh and we have a lot of dumb things that make us laugh one of them is when we sync our videos of our podcast we clap so that uh our producer can make sure to sync up our audios and everything like that and for whatever reason when we do i have always said the word clap 
I, I don't know why. <laughs> like everybody knows. Yes, when you get there, you clap. I say the word. We don't know why, but we always make fun of me. But that's just my segue into telling you that we are videoing this podcast, which you can find over at youtube.com slash fantasy pros. You can find all of our podcasts there. You can find uh, our waiver wire live stream on Tuesday. You can find a start sit live stream on Thursday. You can find two start sit live streams on Sunday morning, 11 to 1 Eastern, right up until game time. We have waiver wire and stash and stream videos. We've got it all over there. Just go to youtube.com slash fantasy pros. Click the subscribe button while you're there so you don't miss anything. All right, Yates, as usual, let's start with the accuracy challenge and discuss some specific fantasy point over-unders. Again, you guys should know what this is over at fantasypros.com slash challenge. Weekly prizes, season-long prizes sponsored by BetMGM. Grand prize for the free contest, three-day, two-night stay at an MGM resort property in Las Vegas, including round-trip airfare. Again, that's fantasypros.com slash challenge. Let's start with Tua Tunga Vailoa against Denver, 16.8 fantasy points. What do you got? Uh, I'm going to take the under here. Uh, I don't think that he hits that mark. Yes, I'm also going under, and that's going to be a theme for me on these for the most part. How about Patrick Mahomes against Vegas? 24.4 fantasy points. It's Mahomes. You take the over. Yeah, that's basically the correct answer. Alvin Kamara against Atlanta, (laughs) 19.7 fantasy points. Oh, man. Uh, If he was fully healthy, I'd say, yeah, take the smash the over here uh, against Atlanta. But we don't have any clarity on that yet. So I'm going to take the under here uh, just because I think that I don't know if he's going to be fully healthy entering this game. Yeah, I'm going under anyway. That's a that's a big line, man. And Atlanta's Atlanta's decent against the run here. So uh, I'll go under Aaron Jones against Indianapolis. 15.2 fantasy points. I'm a little bit lower on Aaron Jones than ECR this week. I'm going to take the under. Yeah, I am i don't know where ECR has him, but I, I'm ranking him aggressively, and I'm still taking the under. I just don't think this is a great week for running back, so I'll go under there. Jonathan Taylor, man, you give me a Jonathan Taylor over under. I'm almost always under at this point, but Green Bay, 10.6 fantasy points. Well, it's so funny because I put out on Twitter last week at before the start of that game, I said Jonathan Taylor over under 10.5 fantasy mm-hmm. points and you know had people on Twitter take the over or under. And immediately they come out of the gate and they feature Jonathan Taylor, you know, and he gets that like what ten yard run or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, crap! Right. Here we go. He almost got all of it just in that <laughs> in that yep. one play. And then he wasn't involved for the rest of the game. So I'm taking the yeah. Over. I would love to see the over. I would love to see it, but you know, no. I, and we're gonna talk about it. it's very interesting where I have the three Indianapolis Colts running backs ranked. So I can't wait to talk about that with you. How about Michael Thomas against Atlanta? Fourteen point four fantasy points. It's an aggressive line based on what we've seen from Michael Thomas here recently, but with Jameis Winston at quarterback, I'm going to take the over. I like it. I like the aggressiveness. I'm going under, though. How about uh, (laughs) T. Higgins against Washington, 12.7 fantasy points? Washington, a tough matchup against opposing wide receivers, but T. Higgins, at this point, he's done nothing for us to doubt him, so I'm taking the over. I will again go under. Jacoby Myers against Houston, 11.7 fantasy points. I think this is a game where New England can only throw, like, uh, should only have to throw the ball like 17 times. Right. So <laughs> all of them could go to Jacoby Myers <laughs> based on what we've seen. But, uh, oh, man, I'll take the under here, but that it's pretty close. Yeah, I agree. That was right around the line. But I will, again, go under. How about Travis Fulgham against Cleveland? 10.9 fantasy points. Uh, he's he's seeing the snaps. He's seeing the targets. Uh, it's just not producing if, with the way that uh, – Carson Wentz is looking right now. I'm going to take the under. Yeah, I'm going to go under as well. And how about Eric Ebron against Jacksonville? 9.1 fantasy points. He's going to have to find the end zone to hit this, but I think that he has a very, very good chance of doing that this week. I'll take the over. I mean, if you're projecting 9.1 fantasy points for any tight end not named Travis Kelsey or Darren Waller at this point, I'm just going to take the under because that's basically where we are. All right. Very, very. So it's Friday morning, guys. You know that. We don't know the practice reports. I will try to give caveats as I always do, but let's start with the Thursday night game. Uh, an interesting one here. Seahawks 28, Cardinals 21. By the way, just as an aside, as a football fan, I was like just kind of giddy a little bit knowing that Murray, as you know, he was a little banged up, but that the two minute drive, I was like, wait, you're telling me They're down by a touchdown, and I get to watch Kyler Murray in a two-minute drive in a huge game on Thursday Night Football. Like, I would just enjoyed it as a football fan, and I would have bet money that they would have found a way to score that touchdown at the end of the game. But it was just like the rare moment, I think, where I stepped out of this job and just watched a football game just for the sake of watching it. And I was like, man, this is fun. But anyway, if you started on the other side of the ball, you started any Seahawk, I mean, you're pretty much happy, right? Wilson, just 197 yards passing, not that great. 
but two touchdowns, plus he throws in the 42 yards rushing. Tyler Lockett catches all nine of his targets for 67 yards and a touchdown. DK Metcalf, three catches, 46 yards, and the touchdown, plus a sweet donk off his helmet in the, uh, <laughs> in the end zone on that one, which should have been a touchdown. And Carlos Hyde, big game here, filling in 16 touches, 95 yards, and a score. I'm not sure there's all that much to discuss here from the Seahawks side. They've got the long week. I mean, I think the biggest thing for me, Yates, and if you want to talk about the receivers, you can. You assume Chris Carson now, and there's already word out that he should be back uh, next week for week 12 against Philadelphia. Do you value Carlos Hyde at this point, like a high-end handcuff, like we do Tony Pollard and Alexander Madison, and just hold on to him, even though, even if we get word that Carson is, in fact, coming back? Normally, yes. However, we have word that Rashad Penny is close to returning to the active roster. So I think this is a situation, <laughs> uh, garage door. Uh, I think this is a situation where, you know, with Rashad Penny close to returning that we just kind of look at Carlos side. I think you can hold on to him because we were supposed to have Chris Carson back on the field this week. That didn't happen. So now with the extended time period, uh, maybe we see Chris Carson come back. So I'm holding on to Carlos Hyde through this next week. And then if Chris Carson plays, I'll let Carlos Hyde go because I think Rashad Penny comes back in the next week or two. Yeah, I mean, I I don't have a strong feeling about it. I, I think given this performance, you probably, I mean, we've been hearing about Penny forever. And again, given that he's been out so long, it's hard to see him coming back and having a major role. But yeah, just a handcuff. If I saw Carlos Hyde dropped right now, I wouldn't go crazy and try to pick him up but it was good since right. we recommended him on two different occasions as our number one waiver wire pickup for him to finally d- this is what we thought this is right what, just, yep just yep when there. we when we recommended him in week four we knew that hey week 11 you're gonna really want there this is guy. somebody in my league one of my leagues who definitely picked up chris uh carlos hyde that week that we recommended him and held him throughout this entire time i'm not even kidding and started him last night and I, well done. You're, you're welcome. You're <laughs> welcome, America. Uh, meanwhile, I will mention that Greg Olson ruptured a fascia in his foot. My guess is his career yeah. is over at this point. Just wanted to give him a shout out because yep. they had a, an excellent, outstanding career overall. And I'm sure he'll make a great broadcaster for the Cardinals. Look, we talked about it last night. Yeah, it's on Slack. Kyler Murray took a lot of shots last night and his shoulder was clearly bothering him. Not 100 percent. Still 269 yards passing and two touchdowns. Plus, he throws in only 15 yards rushing. So that's like a disappointing game for Kyler Murray, which is great because that's where we're at. Neither running back for the Cardinals does much on the ground here. Both do find the end zone. Drake on the ground. Edmonds through the air. What's your general outlook on both of these running backs going forward for the rest of the season? Yeah, well, this is a tougher matchup for opposing running backs. Uh, The wide receiver position is where you attack Seattle. So with the running back position, I really wasn't expecting a ton. I did have Kenyon Drake higher than ECR this past week. I had him at 15 heading into last night's game. So I liked Drake. I had Edmonds a little bit further down. I I had him at 33. So based on the workload, that was kind of one of those situations where you said, okay, Chase Edmonds, really just a low end RB3 based on the position. Mm Uh, if he finds the end zone, of course he can finish higher than that. But Drake is the one that you want to roster moving forward. He looked great. I think that he looked pretty well and uh, pretty good. And so I think moving forward, we can put Drake in our lineups as a mid-range running back two every single week, just because, again, looking at the other options at the running back position. Yeah, I've got Drake at 17 and Edmonds in 30 for in my rest of season ranking. So I think it sounds like we're pretty much there. And yeah, Edmonds is a guy who kind of has the you know bonus value of being a really high-end handcuff like and you know if Drake goes out I know we saw him in that one game and he didn't really produce but he got 28 touches or whatever it is he's he's certainly if Drake were to miss time he'd be an instant guaranteed starter but he offers independent value because he is the guy who's going to get the passing down work and especially when they're you know and if he can get whatever it was 12 yards of separation in the end zone like he did for his touchdown (laughs) uh, you know to be good meanwhile Kudos to Tags, who I know you weren't on the Start Sit Show this week, but he mentioned Larry Fitzgerald as a deep sleeper, and I kind of like poo-pooed it. 10 targets, 8 catches, 62 yards. He leads the team in receiving. Hopkins, pretty quiet here, just 5 for 51. Christian Kirk, 4 for 50. It's disappointing in the great matchup, but again, we we talked about Kyler Murray being banged up. So any takeaways here from this one, you just move on to the next game. No, move on to the next game. I think that with Christian Kirk and Hopkins being the uh, intermediate to deep level threats in this offense, you know, we saw with Kyler Murray wanting to keep things close to the line of scrimmage with his arm, and that's what featured Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, they were running wide receiver screens to Larry Fitzgerald. I don't think we can expect that every single week. So, yeah, you just move on. Yep. All right, the Titans visiting the Ravens. Uh, You're starting Derrick Henry confidently in this matchup, right? 
Of course. Yeah. Now, again, I will say that if there are people who are in any way worried about Murray, I mean, I'm almost positive that Brandon Williams is going to be out in this game and, and he makes a huge difference to their run game. Anyway, you're starting Derrick Henry, obviously, but for me, he's still like a top four option, I believe. How about the receivers here? Um, you're still starting AJ Brown, right? Yeah, some people are going to be concerned based off last last week's performance, but no, you just you plug him right back in. Where your do you have him out of curiosity? I have met 14 okay. this week. All right. Right now I've met 13. My guess is because I'm looking at sort of the landscape. My guess is I'm going to move him down a couple of spots. So he's lower than I usually have him. I have him usually as like a top eight option because I, right. I love the guy. Same here. But uh, I'm, I am moving him down. But you still definitely start him. What about Corey Davis here? Yeah, Corey Davis I have at 44 this week, so I think he's in the flex consideration, but it's a tough matchup. I've said that, you know, based on if it's a plus matchup, then you can plug in Corey Davis as a high-end wide receiver three sometimes. Uh, if it's a more difficult matchup, then that's something where he gets downgraded. He's matchup dependent. So, yeah, he's a flex play for I'm me. right there with you. I'm at 42. Again, that's a guy you can start. I'm starting him in a league, especially a deep league, but, you know, not a guy who you're going out of your way to start as a wide receiver three or anything like that. How about Johnny Yates? Where are we with Johnny Smith in this matchup? Ugh. Um, I have Jonu Smith at tight end 12 this week, so I uh, he's still start worthy. Uh, but again, it's based on the tight end position that it is just an absolute roll of the dice with these guys week in and week out. I put out on Twitter right before we started recording that Dallas Goddard last week had four receptions for 33 yards. Not great, right? No. Yeah, he finishes the tight end 15 on the <laughs> right, week last week. Right. So, like, at this point, if you have the chance to be able to be targeted in the red zone, in the end zone even, which is what Jonu Smith is seeing, then you got to roll him into your lineup. Uh, Jonu Smith or Eric Ebron against Jacksonville? I will play Ebron this How week. How about Jonu or Austin Hooper against Philadelphia? Oh, Austin Hooper's at 11, Jonu's at 12. Yeah. Uh, I'll play Hooper there, but... Because I think that Cleveland's going to have to throw the ball a little bit more than they did last week. Man, uh, yeah, I'll go with the target volume there rather than the touchdown dependency. I agree. And are you sitting Ryan Tannehill in this one? Yeah, yeah, he's a little bit outside that range. So uh, against Baltimore here, I'm, uh, yeah, I've got him at 19 this yeah. week. So I'm really not looking at him. Yeah, we're pretty much right there. I have him at 18. Uh, with the Ravens, you're still starting. I mean, people are so, you know, fantasy angry at Lamar Jackson at this point, but you're, you're still starting him. No questions asked in this matchup, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in this matchup. Yeah. You plug in Lamar Jackson. I've got him at six on the yep, week. I got him at five. How about Mark Andrews? Yeah. Mark Andrews starting to come back, uh, see some more target volume there. Wondering if that is truly dependent upon uh, Nick Boyle leaving the mm -hmm. lineup there. So I think uh, Mark Andrews moving forward, we can at least view him as a safer option than what he has been. He's offering very little upside, but again, based on the tight end position, he saw nine targets last right. week. That's like, that, that's fantasy gold right now with the tight end position. You basically get nine targets as a tight end. I'm like, great, you're in the top five. Doesn't matter anything else right. given what the position is. Anyone else, Yates, on the Ravens, are you willing to start? Uh, willing to start? No. Uh, Marquise Brown is a flex play. Again, you're looking at the matchup and saying that it it could be good for Marquise Brown, but based on what we've seen this year, it's just not going to happen for Marquise Brown. Uh, I'm fine dropping him mm -hmm. if you need to. Uh, that's just kind of where we are with Marquise Brown. Willie Sneed has actually been performing really well in this offense recently, so... If you are absolutely desperate at wide receiver and you need a fill-in option, Willie, I guarantee Willie Sneeds on, Willie Sneeds on your waiver wire. You can go pick him up and plug him in, but that's only if you're truly desperate. This is a, I mean, it, it's we talk about it mostly with the running back position, but it certainly happens with the wide receiver position. I agree with you that Hollywood Brown is droppable, and I think I've said that on the last two waiver wire shows, and yet I run my projections, Yates, and he's 37th in my wide receiver rankings yep. right now. Like, it, it just, it, when I get there, when I get, I, you know, I, I we've talked about it. I'm willing to move guys in my rankings not exactly in line with my projections, right? There are some times I'm just like, no, I, I know this is what my projections say, but I don't, I wouldn't start it this way in if I were in my own league and I'll move it like that. When I get to this range, I just kind of leave it for the most part because I just don't know. And the fact that he's 37th outside wide receiver three range, still clearly a potential starter as a flex option is gross. But that that is where it comes out. So drop him or start him this week, whatever you want to do. We're basically always <laughs> in that range. What about the running backs here, Yates? Are you starting any of Dobbins, Edwards or Ingram? Nope. Don't go anywhere near him. Yeah. Uh, where do you have who's the highest and where do you have him? Uh, it's a great question. Thanks. Um, Thanks. I, well, Ingram, so Ingram missed practice yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, but it sounds, I mean, he did that last week right. and he still played. So that's a situation to monitor today. 
I have Dobbins at 35, mm -hmm. Gus Edwards at 40, and Ingram at 43 right yep. now. I have Dobbins 32, Edwards 39, Ingram 46. So yeah, I mean, there are situations where I could see you having to play them, but try not to if you can. Lions visiting the Panthers. Man, I don't even know what to do with the Lions. <laughs> you, you talked about this, how you have to rewrite this game like 30 times. So here is what we think we know. We expect DeAndre Swift to miss this game, right? Because there was a report Correct. that he came out that he has a concussion and that he is unlikely to play on Sunday. Now, it's a concussion. We have seen Allen Robinson go from doubtful to playing. So don't write off Swift just yet. Let's just, If Swift plays, you are clearly starting him as an, an oh, RB1, yeah. right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he doesn't, what are you doing with the backfield? If he doesn't play, I think AP is going to get a ton of work in a very, very favorable matchup. So he is a low-end running back two for me. I think that you can plug in Adrian Peterson. And then Kerryon Johnson would assume the passing down workload here. So I think that he's a high-end RB3 that gets a slight bump up in full PPR formats. But outside of that, I don't I don't think we can be expecting the type of production that DeAndre Swift would have had. And it's interesting with Swift because he popped up – uh, correct me if I'm – wrong here i think he practiced on wednesday yeah. so i don't know when this con this concussion must have happened in practice on wednesday yeah. it just popped up so at this point i'm not expecting him to play no nor am i so uh, again concussion is the one thing that there's just absolutely no way for us to be able to evaluate but yeah i would plan in and i i mean i uh, you know my i picked up adrian peterson and carry on johnson immediately in a league and I, i'm planning to probably to have to start ap this week because he's just somebody who you can roll out there in this matchup we don't, I, I guess Matthew Stafford is going to play. It's, it's the hope, but he's got the thumb injury. We don't know. Maybe Kenny Galladay is going to play, practice on Wednesday. Then there were reports that he did practice. Then there were conflicting reports that he did not practice on Thursday. I don't know. Marvin Jones must practice on Wednesday, but did return. TJ Hawkinson, of course, is battling through. So let's do it like this. Let's, you can tell me if the answer differs, whether or not Matthew Stafford plays, or I believe Chase Daniel plays. So, if Kenny Galladay plays, you're starting him, right? Yes, regardless. Regardless. If Kenny Galladay plays, are you starting Marvin Jones and doesn't matter who the quarterback is? No. You're not starting him and it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I agree with that, by the way. I'm not, I'm not starting Marvin Jones. Are you starting Marvin Kenny Jones if Kenny Galladay does not play? Yes, if Matthew Stafford plays. No, if Chase Daniel plays. I would like to invent a mathematical formula. You know, it's like the transitive property or the distributive property. This is property. so <laughs> difficult to keep <laughs> track of my, in bad. my mind. It's my bad. I'm doing a terrible job as host laying it out for you. But regardless, here, all right. And TJ Hawkinson, if he plays, start regardless. Yeah, yeah. Start him based on the tight end position. Danny Amendola also missed practice right. yesterday too. Yes, that, that's also true. We have no idea who's playing in this game, but I think the way that I break it down is I'm starting Kenny Galladay regardless of who the quarterback is. If Kenny Galladay plays, I'm probably not starting Marvin Jones regardless of who the quarterback is. If Kenny Galladay does not play, I will probably reluctantly start Marvin Jones regardless of who the quarterback is just because the targets have to go somewhere, and he has been producing of late, but I'm not really all that excited about it. And TJ Hawkinson starts regardless. Would you start Mark Matthew Stafford if he does play? Uh, no. I've said that Matthew Stafford has just been a very, very difficult like case study this season because in the matchups where he's supposed to perform well, he's disappointed. Yep. In the matchups where you go, I'm not going near anywhere near Matthew Stafford, he throws for three touchdowns. So... It's just there's too much volatility here. He's outside my top 20 quarterbacks on the way. All right, for the Panthers, it sounds like Teddy Bridgewater is going to miss this game. How do you feel about the Panthers' three wide receivers here with, I assume it's going to be P.J. Walker starting? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be P.J. Walker. Uh, not great, just because we don't have, like, a large sample size to go off here with P.J. Walker. Yes, we saw him in the XFL, but yet in the NFL, with the NFL, uh, the speed that the NFL defenders bring, we just don't know what he's going to look like. So... I think they're going to try to lean on the run game as much as they can. P.J. Walker brings some mobility here. So I've downgraded every single wide receiver here. I think that Robbie Anderson is like a high-end wide receiver three. D.J. Moore, a low-end wide receiver three. Curtis Samuel, a flex play. Yeah, I mean, he's going to take some shots. That, that's, I think, what we can say. There, there will be some deep passes going on. It's just almost impossible to figure out who they're going to go to. And then I assume, since they are leaning on the run game, do you have Mike Davis here as an RB1? I do. Yeah. Yep. In this match. Yeah, I do as well. Again, I know he's disappointed. 
I mean, maybe not so much in PPR leagues, but of late he's been disappointing, but you've got to roll him out there and you've got to do it confidently. So Yates, before we keep going, I don't know if you knew this. Did you know that I used to be like 70 pounds heavier than I am right now? I didn't know that. Not a joke. Uh, A long time ago before I was even your youthful age. Uh, But yeah, my (laughs) family doesn't have the quote unquote skinny jeans not like the jeans you wear like genomes or whatever like we just don't and i went to college in buffalo so there's a lot of eating of wings and drinking a beer and staying inside in the horrible winters and the way i lost the weight this is not a joke i invented intermittent fasting okay it's like all the rage now but you go back 20 years or whatever and i invented it i literally just like would not eat for a long time and i'd work out and stuff like that and then you know have like a little bit and the thing is My body got used to not eating so much so that food's like a huge driver for my wife, who's a very tiny human being. I just don't think about it a lot. Legitimately, if she goes to work and I'm at home by myself, I just forget to eat. Like she'd come home and she'd be like, what do you have for lunch today? And I'd be sitting there thinking about it, not being able to remember. She'd be like, you forgot to eat again, didn't you? And the answer is yes. That's just kind of the way I'm built, which isn't good. So the other day she was at work and she texted me and it just said, open your drawer. And I opened my drawer and there was a package of Magic Spoon cereal. So yeah, I still have it as my breakfast because that's like the only thing I really eat for breakfast at this point. But now it's the sustenance that gets me through the entire day. I try to mix it up. So if I have blueberry in the morning, I'm going to have the frosted for like my snack during the day. If I have the fruity in the morning, I'm going to have the cocoa for a snack. And uh, don't worry if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, as I mentioned earlier, youtube.com slash fantasy pros, you know, I'm not gaining weight. I'm still the same svelte Dan that I've been for like the last 15 (laughs) years because it's healthy. No sugar, 11 grams of protein, three net grams of carbs in each serving, GMO free, gluten free, keto friendly, all of that good stuff. You don't need to take my word for it, guys. It is 100% guaranteed. You order it. You don't like it for any reason. They are going to refund your money. Go to magicspoon.com slash fantasy pros. Grab a variety pack. Use our code FANTASYPROS to get free shipping. That's magicspoon.com slash FANTASYPROS. Use the code FANTASYPROS to get free shipping. All right, let's get to the Steelers visiting the Jaguars. Uh, I've got another mathematical formula here for you. I'll try to make it clear. (laughs) It's America's favorite game. What is the difference between your highest ranked Steelers wide receiver of the big three and your lowest ranked Steelers wide receiver? What's the number difference between the highest and the lowest? The over-under has been set uh, at 5.5 spots difference. Uh, that would be under. Yep. I have Deontay Johnson at 10, Chase Claypool at 12, and Juju Smith-Schuster at 13. I love it. I love it. That's basically, I mean, I have it slightly different. I have Deontay at 12, Juju Smith-Schuster at 14, and Chase Claypool at 16. I hate the question that I get every single time in the IG Live, which Steelers receiver would you start? The answer is always all of them. Just all of them. Just start them. But yeah, that's the thing. They're all borderline wide receiver ones, essentially, in this matchup. What about James Conner, who I will now like to refer to as the poster child for 2020 running backs, right? You're not, he's not (laughs) not getting the touches, not producing when he does get the touches, must start option, right? I mean, that's basically what we're looking at, right? Yep, I've got him at RB11 on the week. Uh, Not excited about it, but when you look at the options behind him, like, I've got Zeke right behind him. That's what I'm saying. uh, Welcome to 20. Yeah, I am at 10, and I'm like, gross. I don't even want to start him. Uh, But Ben is a Stark here, right? At this point, you're just rolling him out there. Yeah, absolutely. Based on their passing volume, you got to plug in Ben Roethlisberger into your starting lineup. I'm at 6. I mean, I I feel like that's aggressive. I have met met 5. Oh, okay. Not that aggressive then. Uh, For the Jaguars... James Robinson has earned your trust each and every matchup. How about DJ Chark here? Do you are you willing to roll him out? Uh, so really quick with James Robinson, uh, limited in practice yesterday with a shoulder injury, okay. so that's just something to keep an mm-hmm. eye on. Uh, but I do expect him to play. Otherwise, you're looking at uh, Ozigbo as the next man up, and that's just not going to be. Right. <laughs> that's not going to work. Uh, <laughs> so I think yeah, with DJ Chark though, uh, I've got him as like I've got him as a high end wide receiver three. So I've got him at 26 in my rankings right now. There's a difference in some of these rankings where you look at, uh, and when writing up my weekly article, I'll say like this guy is a, a high end wide receiver three that comes with upside, right? Because but he's a high end wide receiver three mm-hmm. because he does come with some volatility. So with DJ Chark, I think he's a safe option. I don't know if he brings a lot of upside in this matchup. Yeah, I have Jake Luton going to be under pressure all game long. The Steelers are just going to send blitz after blitz after blitz and try to you know rattle him, yeah. and I think it's going to work. So. Not super confident in DJ Chark this week. Yeah, he's, you know, Luton is just 
not great under pressure, but he's going to take his shots. And again, last week, I talked about it with Tags last week. I was kind of encouraged almost last week. The wind was terrible. Chark did get open down the field. Luton threw it like 50 yards, but the wind kind of knocked it down. Other than that, Chark has a 70-yard touchdown. In the end, he ended up with whatever it was, like four catches, five catches for 50 yards. So I I do think he's going to have a decent game. With that said, 26. That's exactly where I have him as well. You're not starting Keelan Cole, though, right? You're not going anywhere near any other Jaguar. Uh, yeah, not looking at Keelan Cole as anything more than a low end flex. Yep, play. and that's it. Close your eyes if you're starting any Jaguars and hope for the best. Also, I'm on the Jags getting 10.5 points from the Sealers, so mark that down. Patriots visiting the Texans. Yates, I don't know, man. We might have three potentially must start options for the Patriots. Like, I've got Cam Newton at 10 in my quarterback rankings, I've got yep. Harris at 16 in my running back rankings, and I've got Jacoby Myers at 32. So, not, you know, within the wide receiver three range, but. I don't know, man. I I feel like I'm starting all three of those guys. What about you? I'm right there with you on each of those guys. I've got Myers at 32. I've got Harris at, if I have met 16, I'm going to flip. I love it. Uh, I've met 18. And then I have Cam Newton. And then I have Cam Newton at seven. Okay. All right. That's good. So yeah. I mean, I just think that this is a game. Again, I, I'm I'm willing to kind of give the Patriots offense a little bit of a pass for the couple of weeks that we saw back in the day. Because I mean, you, Newton's talked about it. He didn't feel right after COVID, and it took yep. a few weeks. And you know, they look like they kind of have it figured out. Myers has really come on. How about Rex Burkhead though? I mean, he he caught you know the two touchdowns. I mean, do you think that? Uh, He's somebody who fancy managers can rely on in half or full PPR leagues? Uh, Rely on? No. Uh, So I've got him at 30 uh, in my running back rankings this week. So you can absolutely plug him in. I think he's taken over the passing down work Mm -hmm. here from James White. James White only two targets last week. I think think he caught both of them. But yeah, Rex Burkhead seems to have this role carved out in this offense. So it's going to be Harris on first and second down. And then it's going to be Rex Burkhead factoring in as, as the receiving back out of the backfield. So... I think Burkhead is someone that you can plug in, but again, he's not someone that I'm fully confident in yet. He's put together some back-to-back, uh, some solid back-to-back performances here, but again, I just I don't feel confident plugging uh, plugging him into my Would lineup. Would you start Rex Burkhead or in half PPR Burkhead or Naheem Hines? It's a great question. I would start Naheem Hines this week. Yeah, I have Burkhead one spot ahead there, so that that's kind of the line where it is. Guys who I don't feel overly confident in starting, but. I mean, in the situation that we're in, we're still dealing with bye weeks. Running back is gross. I think you might be able to get away with it. For the Texans, you're starting Deshaun Watson and the receivers here? or Yeah, you're looking at the matchup here. Uh, the Patriots are allowing 8.2 yards per attempt uh, this season, which is second worst in the NFL, only behind Jacksonville, or only in front of Jacksonville. So I think this is a matchup where you're looking at the wide receivers here. And Stephon Gilmore, limited in practice, doesn't look like he's going to play. Uh, so Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, they should be in line for for big performances. Yeah, I'm starting both of them. I mean, I have Fuller. I'm more confident in Fuller, but I am starting both of them. Uh, and are you going back to the Duke Johnson well, assuming that this illness was nothing to worry about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, assuming that that's nothing, uh, then I've got him at 14 on the week. Yeah, I've got him at 18. I kind of want to move him up, but I also, you know, he's in that big range of, oh, man. I don't really want to right. start you, but I'm going to start you. Uh, Eagles visiting the Browns. It's Cleveland, so you know we've got to get a little bit of weather here, uh, but just normal bad weather, not the like 50 mile an hour winds that we've seen. Let's take just the both teams and the position groups together here. You're starting Nick Chubb, and you are starting Miles Sanders. No questions asked in this one, right? Correct. How about Hunt? Because on the start sit show, Tags was really saying, I don't know, you know, Kareem Hunt, whatever his ECR was, 14 or something like that that he thought that that was way too high and that he thought he should be more in the 20s because of the fact that obviously Philadelphia has a very solid run defense. How do you feel about Kareem Hunt here? I'm fine plugging in Kareem Hunt. Again, it's more so based on the running back landscape right. that, I mean, Kareem Hunt, they're going to try to lean on the run game. Yep. And yes, you know, Philadelphia is a solid run defense for sure, but Kareem Hunt also brings upside in the passing game too. So I think that if you have a situation where Cleveland's not going to be able to run as effectively as they did last week, I think both uh, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, 19 overall rush attempts, you know, 38 between the two of them, like, that's that's a ton of work on the ground. I don't know if they're going to be that effective this week. So then if that's the case, you're going to look at Baker Mayfield having an increased passing volume, which you know means that the ball could go to Kareem Hunt a little bit more in the passing game. So 
I don't think he has ridiculous upside in this one, but again, he's at 13 in my rankings yeah. this week because of the running back landscape. Yeah, he's at 14 for me. I just feel like, you know, he's probably going to get 17 to 19 touches. He's going to get work in the passing right. game. Like, it's just really hard to move. I'll take that. Right, I'll take that any day of the week, given where we are. So are you starting, Yates, any wide receiver in this game? I mean, Jarvis Landry, Fulgham, Rager, Higgins, anybody who you're looking to start in this matchup? Yeah, I think you start these players, but again, not as anything as like locked in options, right? So Landry, I have at 37, Fulgham, I have at 41, Rager, I have at 43, uh, you know, so in that range, uh, I'm not looking at Richard Higgins, you know, they're, they're a little bit further down. So I guess the, the three that I'll answer there are Jarvis Landry, Fulgham, and Rager, but again, is only as flex. Yeah, players. you basically, I, th I feel like you're like two spots higher on each of those guys. So like we're in the same range, but just like slightly higher in each of those. They're guys you can get away with. I'm starting Fulgham in a league who for me is just outside of a wide receiver three range. But again, it's basically flex time. It's, it's you know, you can get away with those guys. And for the tight ends, I mean, I'm starting both Goddard and Hooper here. Both are in my top 10, actually. How about you? So Goddard's an interesting situation because Zach Ertz has, like, there's a possibility that Zach Ertz plays in this game. Yeah. And if Ertz returns, then I'm not going to be willing to be And to, to be, to be fair, I mean, he I'm not expect. I know he was, you know, he he's still got the practice window. I, I was not expecting him to play in this game. If he does play in this game, I completely agree. That takes away the shine off Goddard for sure right. so assuming he doesn't though are you good with Goddard yep yeah based on the tight end landscape mm -hmm. uh then you plug him in I've got Goddard at six on the week right yeah. now uh he'll come tumbling down if Zach Ertz plays and it's not necessarily something where I'm sitting here saying okay Zach Ertz is now going to be a top 12 option uh based on what we saw previously this season it's just something where they cancel each other yeah. out yeah I have got it right now at seven and Hooper at 10 so I don't know Yep. Crazy landscape that we're in. What about Wentz real quick here? I will say that Miles Garrett is out for this game. He has just been put on the reserve COVID list. Um, so he is out for this game. How do you feel about uh, Carson Wentz in this one? Looked ugly last week. Oh, it looked real bad. Um, this is a fine matchup for opposing quarterbacks and wide receivers. So, and again, with Miles Garrett, that changes the running game too. Mm -hmm. So I think with Carson Wentz, you can get away starting him but i've got away with starting him but i've got him at 15 on the week i'm not sitting here like super excited to plug him into my life. yeah i've got him at 11 and it feels gross but i don't really feel <laughs> good about anybody at like after that in quarterback and yeah this is just continues the trend of news breaking while we're like legitimately as i'm talking a tweet from Shepard comes out and i have to make sure i relay it so yes miles garrett is out if you're listening to this uh falcons visiting the saints you are starting julio jones and you're st are we expecting calvin ridley to play in this game yates so it doesn't it sounds like the the website the falcons website released a report saying that ridley's injury is not progressing right. the way that they want it to but yet there's still the possibility that he plays in this game so this is a situation where i don't have any clarity on this right now i want to see the the practice reports later on today to before I officially come out and say like yeah start Calvin Ridley so I'll just say this if Ridley does practice today and he uh, is on track to play then of course I'm plugging in Calvin Ridley uh, this is a fine matchup for opposing wide receivers I'll plug him in as a high-end wide receiver too just bump him down a little bit given the injury concerns yeah. uh, if he sits then I'm still not going near Russell Gage though but Hayden Hurst would get a bump up. I love that you already answered my follow-up question I completely agree with all that you're starting Hurst regardless though if Ridley plays yep yep that's where we are at tight end and how about Gurley is this the usual god I don't want to start this guy and I'm starting him he has not averaged more than 2.79 yards per carry over the last four games. Good thing it's such a great matchup, though, for this one, right? Against the Saints. So <laughs> right. What do you do? Yeah. Uh, I've got Gurley at 20 this week. Yeah. I am not optimistic. Uh, I think that there are some other options. Like, it would be a really, really tough decision for me if I had Todd Gurley and I had J.D. McKissick on my roster. I actually think I might be going McKissick. I have Gurley at 19. Again, I don't want to start Todd Gurley, but yeah, we are. And I have McKissick slightly behind him, but yeah, man, that's close. That's close. It's just, it's hard to ignore the fact that as, as bad as Gurley has looked, I realize it's because of the touchdowns. He does produce. He does, you know, find the end zone every time. It's a terrible matchup, but yeah, he's still right now sitting in my top 20, which is gross. How about Matt Ryan? Are you throwing him out there in this one? Yeah, as a low-end QB1. All right, so uh, I'm going to ask you about Jameis Winston, but I will say that Rob Borch has tweeted that the Saints <laughs> have given Taysom, Harder, uh, Taysom Hill starter reps in practice this week. So I, I don't. I, are you starting Jameis Winston in this matchup, Yates? Uh, if I <laughs> if I want to swing for the fences, I will start Jameis Winston. I, I don't buy into that report personally. 
Uh, I could look really stupid here <laughs> a couple of days, but I don't buy into it. Taysom Hill at this point, it's a, we talked about it on the Tuesday podcast with Trevor Sigma saying like, okay, what's the, what's the offensive philosophy here? Is the fact that Drew Brees doesn't have the arm strength at this point of his career to be able to push the ball deep downfield. Well, if you don't have that, and Taysom Hill at this point is not a refined passing quarterback. He is a weapon on the ground. So if you can't push the ball deep downfield and you can't threaten defenses that way, then what do you do? You bring in some mobility here with Taysom Hill and you threaten defenses that way to keep them on their toes. And so with Winston now stepping in, who does have the arm strength, are they still going to lean on Taysom Hill in that role or do they just say we'll give winston all the reps because he can threaten defenses in a variety of ways so i think i'm more willing to roll the dice with winston i think there are going to be a lot of people who are off of him but he's at qb 11 right now in my rankings before we got that report he'll come down probably be just in front of carson wentz yeah i've got him at 13 right now with that i i agree with you i mean it's the same thing like that you could have had Taysom hill as your backup quarterback if you wanted by not signing Jameis Winston and not signing right, Teddy Bridgewater exactly. last year. So I think he'll be more involved if he's tight and eligible as he is. I think in ESPN leagues, I he's probably top five at worst tight end for me. Are you agree with that? Would you start Taysom Mills as your tight end? No questions asked if he's eligible. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to get away from him. We talked about briefly about Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara, assuming that he's healthy on the over-under. So you're starting both of them, no problem. Are you starting anybody else on the Saints in this matchup? I'm not. I mean, Emmanuel Sanders and Traquan Smith, if I am like, and this is more of a, again, I don't play DFS, but this is more of a situation like if you are looking for a super cheap option, Traquan Smith being utilized as the deep, uh, you know, threat downfield in this offense with Jameis Winston could be in line for one or two big plays. But outside of that, you're not plugging them into your, you know, redraft lineups. Bengals visiting Washington. Um, T. Higgins mispracticed. Can we hold on really quick with New Orleans? Can we talk about if Alvin Kamara misses what we do with Latavius? Murray? Oh, sure. Are you really worried that he's going to miss this game? I mean, he was battling the, is it the same, you know, he mispracticed last week. So I haven't. I thought he missed. I thought, I thought he missed both practices this week. Um, well, I, I have, it, it might be my, but we can talk about that. Yes. I have not. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed this. So he says he's good to go for week 11. Yeah. Just. Dis- despite missing How okay dare you try to take over my host role no you <laughs> yeah, it was it was fair what we, i if let's just do it though if alvin kamara was out what would you do with latavius murray he'd be a low end rb2 there fan. you go bengals visiting washington t higgins did miss yesterday's practice with an illness i don't know you know obviously when you hear illness you don't know whether or not it's covid related but for right now assuming that he plays are you good with starting both him and tyler boyd yep absolutely and if higgins is out are you starting? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the word AJ Green was, oh, that's where I was going with that, but that is fine. You have uh, you have answered. Okay, so Schefter just tweeted, by the uh, way. Taysom yes. Hill will start. Yes, Taysom Hill will start Sunday versus the Falcons. He took all the starter reps at practice this week. Uh, Winston will be the backup. Well, so you know how I said that I could look really stupid in a couple of days. <laughs> it only took like a minute. I meant a couple it of minutes. A minute. I meant, only meant a couple of minutes. All right, so yeah. let's talk about Taysom Hill as a quarterback very quickly. Uh, <laughs> very quickly. I'll, and I won't hold you to this, and we'll have our rankings. We have them on our, our Twitter profiles. Where are you going to rank Taysom Hill this week? Oh, this is this is gross. Um, Everything is gross. That is the right answer. With his rushing upside, I think that you can – view him as a streaming plus the matchup i think you can view him as a high end qb2 low end qb1 this is a this downgrades all the receiving weapons for me though like we don't have any sort of sample size outside of just a few random passes here or there to lean back on and say like michael thomas is going to see 10 plus targets in this one and he's going to be you know like he would with james winston i just don't i don't feel comfortable so michael thomas is going to come crashing down my rank he's probably be a low end wide receiver too now this is so 2020. Legitimately, this is this so is, 2020. Yeah. I don't understand what's happening. Okay, so let's get uh, back to the Bengals here. Uh, okay, we're not starting AJ Green regardless. So I expect Joe Mixon to be ruled out, and I look forward to next week when I, I have Gio Bernard and I'm trying to trade him for anything of use, and they're like, no, nah, no, nah, Joe Mixon's coming back, and then he misses practice the whole week. If he's out, are you starting Gio Bernard in this matchup against Washington? Yep. Uh, I don't think he has much upside, but again, I'll start him. I've got him at 17 this week. How about Joe Burrow here? Uh, I've got him as a high-end QB2 in my ranking, so I'm willing to roll the dice. Yep. 
Uh, I am as well. I have him, I believe, 14th right now. So you can get away with it. For Washington, Gibson is a must start. And you're starting J.D. McKissick? I mean, you were you were talking about him versus uh, Todd Gurley. So you're willing to roll with him in half and certainly full PPR leagues, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we made the joke all last week. Like, we can't expect 14 targets again from J.D. <laughs> McKissick. Well, we were right. <laughs> we got 15 targets. Right. So. Uh, 29 targets over the last two weeks is just ridiculous for a running back here. So I think, yeah, based on his workload with Alex Smith at quarterback, you start J.D. McKissick. And Terry McLaurin, top 10 option this week? Oh, yeah, locked and loaded. And I want to hear you say it, Yates. I want to hear it. Logan Thomas is a top (laughs) 12 option at tight end this week. Will you say that? Uh, no, not there, but he's close. Yeah, well, he is, he's close. He is for this me. is a matchup where you start opposing Titans. Yes, so. he's 12 for me. So start your Logan Thomas shares, and you're welcome for <laughs> recommending him as a pickup 30 weeks ago. Dolphins visiting the Broncos. Uh, look, Matt Breida sounds like he's going to play in this one. So are you okay with starting Savan Ahmed, or are you too nervous about a given Breida's potential role? Yeah, yep. It's a, it's a situation where I'm a little bit more nervous. So with... Matt Breida and Savan Ahmed, they're probably going to be high-end RB3s for me uh, just because I don't know what this backfield's going to look like. Yeah, I uh, don't like it at all. I, I just, I don't, I mean, I, I, I will probably start Ahmed as a high-end running back three or flex play here. I'll be probably, because right now he's at 24, assuming that Breida's not going to have a big role, but I'm going to have to do some digging here. I, I don't feel nearly as confident in it as I did earlier in the week. How about Devontae Parker here? I mean, he's, you know, with Preston Williams down, he, he's got the targets. He's, you know, producing a little bit. Are you willing to start him in this matchup? Yeah, I, I've i got him at 29 right now. So you can start him, but I'm not expecting crazy things here from uh, from Devontae Parker. Yeah, I've got him at 31. So we're basically there. Anybody else you want to start on the Dolphins? Uh, not that I want, well, Gesicki, uh, as a streaming option, if you absolutely need one, uh, but I'm not looking at him as a top 12 option. The, the one thing I'll mention here is Jakeem Grant. Mm-hmm. Keep an eye on Jakeem Grant this game. He performed well last week, uh, with his expanded role with Preston Williams landing on IR. So this is a situation where I don't want to start Jakeem Grant just yet, but I do think that we should keep our eyes on him just to see how he does. Mike Gesicki or Logan Thomas? Uh, it's a good question. My gut reaction is that I'd play Logan Thomas, double checking my rankings, yep. and that is the case. Good. That's the correct answer. For the Broncos, uh, Drew Locke is unclear as of now. I'm not really sure it matters much to how you evaluate the passing game, but you can let me know if I'm wrong. But start with the running backs. Are you starting either Melvin Gordon or Philip Lindsay? Nope. Not as anything more than RB3s. How about the Broncos receivers, and does it matter whether or not it's Locke or Brett Reppin? Uh, I really don't think there's much of a drop-off. I think they're going to have to throw the ball a ton regardless. So uh, I'm fine with really all of the options, but as nothing more than like low-end wide receiver threes. Yeah, I have Judy at 36, Patrick at 47, and Hamler at 52. The Dolphins' defense is legit. Uh, you know, I, I don't really want to go near any of them if I can, but it's a little hard. They are getting targets because the Broncos are falling behind, and so they've, they've got to go into throw right. mode. So you can get away probably with any of them if you absolutely have to, but Judy is the guy who I would lean on if I had to go with one. Jets visiting the Chargers. You're starting Jamison Crowder in this matchup? Yeah, yeah, just, uh, well, uh, with Joe Flacco at quarterback, it downgrades him a little bit. So I've got him at 31 this week. If it was Sam Darnold, I'd have him as a top 24 option. Yeah, I've got him at 27. That's still a start for me at this point, especially where we are. So, I mean, anybody in the top 36, I feel like, yeah, you're starting. Are you starting any other Jet in this matchup? No. The one thing I would say is I would add LaMichael Piran if you, not to start him, not to play him this week, but if there was that report that they are going to, you know, maybe lean into him a little more. So I would rather add him before this game, just in case that comes to fruition, which there's like a 99% chance that it won't. Uh, true or false, Yates, Kalen Balaj is a must start option in week 11 of the 2020 NFL season. I don't know if I'm willing to go must start there. Uh, so I'll go false. Uh, nope. But this is back to back. I put this out on Twitter that n- nothing sums up 2020 fantasy football more than back to back Kalen Balaj revenge games yep. uh, against <laughs> Miami and New York here. So, yeah, with with Kalen Balaj, I mean, he's going to see a ton of work. So I think that he's a, he's at 20 in my running back rankings right now or 21. Uh, That's a must so, start, man. 
21. I Come know. On. It's a situation. Like, it's like, I don't. Oh, no. Sorry. He's a little bit further down. He's 24. Boo. So, no, no, no. I, like, Ronald, he's, Ronald Jones, I have one spot ahead. And that's just the territory that we're at. Like, Ronald Jones comes with so many question marks. We talked about it. Like, I don't want to start Ronald Jones ever. But yet, based on the position, I mean, I'll. Uh, I'll start Ronald Jones over Kalen Balaj this week. By Sunday, by the time lineups lock, you are going to move Balaj up in your rankings. And that is my prediction. He's 17th for me. I am completely confident starting Kalen Balaj. I don't know what has happened to the world, but whatever. Keep- Chris, Chris, our video guy, if you're listening, <laughs> clip that. And have that be the intro to one of our podcasts. Segments That's a good here. call. The, I am completely confident in starting Kalen Balazs. Oh well, gosh. now he's going to clip my voice. <laughs> Dang it. Well, a rookie mistake <laughs> by you. Keenan <laughs> Allen, Justin Herbert, Hunter Henry, all top six ish options at their position. Yep. Okay. How about Mike Williams here? I mean, the Jets secondary, it, it's terrible when it's fully healthy. It is completely not healthy at this point. Are you starting Mike Williams? Yes, absolutely. I have Mike Williams. Oh, I've gotten down at 36. Right you know, now. that's why, how I keep, feel, I keep feeling like, yeah, of course I'm starting Mike Williams. And then I go through my list. I'm like, why he's at 38? I, I feel like no, I've, we've got to move, move up, up, right? He'll move up. Yep. Yeah, I'll move him up as well into wide receiver three territory. It's still, look, we, you know, there's still a lack of consistency, still kind of dependent on the big play. But yeah, when all is said and done, he's going to be in the wide receiver three range. Packers visiting the Colts. Look, Devonta Adams you know, has mispracticed. He hasn't sounded all that confident. Assuming he goes, you're obviously starting Devontae Adams. It looks like Alan Lazard is going to return here. Do you start Alan Lazard or MVS if Adams plays, or do you start either one of them if he doesn't play? Yeah, so if Adams plays, Lazard can be rolled into your lineup as like a low-end wide receiver three, uh, high-end flex play. I think that he benefits, you know, having Adams in the lineup. Uh, If Adams misses, I'm really not looking Lazard's way as anything more than a flex play just because I think defenses are going to be able to focus in on him and just say, okay, we're fine if MVS beats us, right? Like, it's the likelihood of that happening is very minimal. So let's take away Lazard and force Rodgers to beat us elsewhere. And I just don't know if that's going to happen. So MVS, I'm not looking this way. Okay. And how about the running backs here? You're starting Aaron Jones. So you did say you were a little lower on him than consensus. <laughs> right, Dan. Yeah. So Dan. Okay. So this is just like the people listening to this uh, later on are just going to be cracking up. This is the, how quickly this is. I saw, I spiraling. saw this by the way, Jameis Winston, Jameis Winston will not be part of any offensive packages Sunday versus the Falcons. Her, uh Diana, uh, is it Rossini? Yeah. Uh, the Saints quarterback now is Taysom Hill. Yeah, so just this will eventually go from us being like Taysom Hill is a top 12 option to uh, next tweet it will be that uh, James Winston cut by the Saints. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Give it, f- I'm setting the over under five minutes. Yeah, I'm really glad that in the many leagues that I was, uh, had Drew Brees that I, I wasted a waiver claim on Jameis Winston that's an error error on Harris my bad on that one all right let's get to this game though uh you said that you were fading Jones a little bit compared to the consensus so where do you have Aaron Jones this week then in your running yeah ECR had him at like four Mm -hmm. um I've got him at eight I believe yeah I've got him at eight so again it's relative like I'm fading him but yet you're still absolutely starting Aaron Jones it's just a matter of with even last week against Jacksonville that was a smash spot for him and splitting workload splitting the work with Jamal Williams I just don't, and it got a tough matchup here. I just don't see the upside for Aaron Jones to finish as a top five running back this week. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. It's, you know, it, the difference right now in that range is is pretty minimal. Like, you're obviously starting those guys. What about Jamal Williams here, who's, you know, been getting a little bit more extra work? Again, we'll talk about the fact that the Colts have a very strong defense overall anyway, so this isn't a great matchup regardless. But how do you feel about Jamal Williams? Yeah, he gets a boost in full PPR formats as into like that mid-range RB3 territory, but in half PPR standard leagues, I'm not I'm not looking to start Jamal Williams. How about Rodgers? Are you rolling him out there this week? Uh, yeah, he does get a downgrade as well, though, uh, especially if Adams misses. So I've got him as a low-end QB1 right now, uh, but again, you start him. Rodgers or Matt Ryan? That is one that I've legitimately gone back and forth in my rankings all week. Like I've brought Ryan up. And then I've moved him down. And then I brought him up like and flip-flopping those two. So I have right now Rodgers at 9, Ryan at 10. I am in your head, man. I know exactly what you're thinking. That's why I ask you about those guys who are right there. I have Rodgers at 8 and Ryan at 9. So very close. And is Robert Tunyon off your radar at this point? Yeah. I mean, if Adams misses, then you could play with fire and you can roll uh, Tunyon into your starting lineup. But outside of that, I'm not looking his way. Who is your favorite Indianapolis Colts running back? in this game 
Naheem Hines, but I have him at 25 on the week. I'm not really looking his way. I mean, you're looking at Hines has done this. He's exploded and then for two multiple scores, and then the next week he his snap share just goes completely down. It's just a complete guessing game right now with this backfield. I I think you can start Hines, but as far as confidence level is, it's not high. I have Hines at 29, Jonathan Taylor at 30, and Jordan Wilkins at 31, which is just preposterous. Yep. But that's kind of how I feel about it. I don't want to start any of them. I have zero confidence in who is going to be the best running back for the exact reasons that you said about Hines. I just, I don't know. I don't want any pizza. Where do you have Taylor and Wilkins this week? Yeah, I've got Taylor at 29 and Wilkins at 42. Okay. <coughs> Look, Excuse whoever me. gets the work in this match, this is a good matchup. This is where you attack the Packers matchup. again, you know, on the ground. So whoever gets it is good. We just don't know who that's going to be. Anybody else? Are you starting Michael Pittman Jr.? Uh, you can start him as a low-end wide receiver three, high-end flex play. It depends on if Jair Alexander plays, yeah. which I think all indications right now are that yeah, he it's is trending going up. to play. Yeah, at this point, then he's probably going to shadow uh, Michael Pittman Jr. because he's not shadowing T.Y. Hilton no. or Zach Pascal. So, uh, you know, I, I think that that just limits his upside. But again, he should see enough targets in this one. So, yeah, flex play. Yeah, I've got him at 43. That feels about right. Somebody who I can get away with starting, but who I'm not going out of my way uh, up to start. How about the Cowboys visiting the Vikings? How do you feel here about the Cowboys wide receiver? Sounds like Andy Dalton is going to start again here. Obviously, the Vikings secondary is not good. So how do you feel about all three of these guys? Yeah, better than I have previously. Mm -hmm. uh, so Amari Cooper, I have as a low-end wide receiver two this week. C.D. Lamb, I have as a low-end wide receiver three. Uh, the last full game that Andy Dalton played, it was against Arizona, and C.D. Lamb saw 11 targets right. that week. So I think you can get away with starting C.D. Lamb this week. Michael Gallup is the one who I have a little bit further down, not looking his way. Yep, absolutely. I've got Amari at 24, so I'm starting him as a low-end wide receiver two, just like you. Lamb is roughly a low-end wide receiver three, maybe a little bit lower for me. Gallup outside, really, of where I'm considering starting anyone. And you're starting Zeke, no problem in this matchup? Yeah, I have him just outside uh, my top 12 running backs. So based on volume and the matchup, uh, again, I don't think that it's kind of the similar conversation <clears throat> with what I said earlier. Like some of these guys, you say, yeah, they're a high-end RB2, but he comes with upside. Uh, there's no upside here with Zeke. Uh, scoring opportunities just might not be there with this offense. Yeah. So I think that uh, RB3 is probably, or, or I'm sorry, RB13 is probably where he's going to land. Yeah, I've got him at 11 right now, but it's very close within that matchup. Uh, for the Vikings, short week for Dalvin Cook, and he's coming off 34 touches, but he's still, what, number one or number two in your rankings? Yeah, he's number one. Okay. Start both Vikings wide receivers here, Thielen and Jefferson? Yeah, the concern is that they take a back seat to uh, Dalvin Cook yet again in this matchup. So, But this is a, I mean, if, if Minnesota is smart, they'll attack the Cowboys secondary with their, you know, amazing receiving options. Yep. So. Yeah, I've got both of them inside my top 24 wide receivers on the week. Yep, absolutely. Any interest in anyone else on the Vikings at all? No. Okay. Chiefs visiting the Raiders. Again, this is another situation where you've got Clyde Edwards-Alaire dealing with an illness. We don't know anything about it, but you're starting Edwards-Alaire if he plays? Yeah, I've got him as a mid-range RB2. Mm -hmm. uh, they are just not giving work to these running backs, and I mean... Well, like I can't fault them. It's the same it's thing working. with the Steelers, <laughs> you know? man. Same thing with the Steelers. Right, like, exactly. I, I'd, I'd love it for fantasy purposes if we could have a reliable RB1 with these guys, but I can't fault them for going to the air all day, every day, because they're succeeding in doing it, you know? Yeah, and this is a matchup that you would love to see that happen yeah. against the Raiders' run defense. But uh, So I've got CEH at 16. Le'Veon Bell is off my radar. He's going to see just enough work to take away some of uh, CEH's workload. And, and eat into that, but you're not looking his way. He's only a high, you know, insurance running back at this yeah, point. Yeah, I've got Bell at 36 in my running back rankings. Now, if CEH does miss, you're starting Le'Veon Bell in this matchup, right? Yeah, he'd probably just plug right into RB16 where I had CEH. All right, and of course, you're starting Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Tyree Kill. Are you starting Sammy Watkins in his return here? As a flex play? Uh, you know, you can insert him into your lineup because he's going to see the ridiculous target workload that he's been seeing. Uh, so I think, again, you have the injury risk. There's always the possibility that he leaves this game uh, at, at any point, you know, that any any game. Yep. So I think <clears throat> with Watkins, I'd love to wait a week before I confidently plug him back into my lineup, but this is a fantastic matchup. So if you want the boom potential, I'm fine plugging in Sammy Watkins. All right, for the Raiders, of course, you're starting Jacobs. You're starting Waller. Are you starting anybody else for Las Vegas? 
No, with Booker, uh, he's getting the work because it's been the favorable game scripts. It's not going to happen in this one. So Booker should see enough work to be viewed as like an RB3. But again, that's not someone who you're like confidently plugging into your lineup. And then uh, any of the wide receivers don't go anywhere near him. Yeah, uh, I will say now that Jameis Winston is apparently not involved in the game at all, I'll be starting Derek Carr in a league because he's pretty much the only available quarterback on waiver wire. And of course... It's not, you know, you, you can attack the Chiefs, you know, on the ground more than through the air. But you saw what Carr did in this first matchup against the Chiefs. He, he's been pretty efficient. So he's a guy who lands at 15 in my rankings. I don't know where he lands in yours, Yates. It'd be somebody who's kind of borderline in that streaming conversation for Carr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's at 14 right yep. now. And again, he'll move up with Jameis Winston crashing down. So again, the last time that these guys played in week five, Carr threw for 347 yards and three touchdowns. Yep. So, yeah, that's his best game uh, from a fantasy perspective of the entire season. So I'm willing to go to look Carr's way. Yep, and I will have to do that in at least one league. Uh, Rams <laughs> visiting the Bucs. There's two tough defenses here, Yates. So let's start with the Rams. Are you willing to start any Rams running back in this matchup? Man, these situations, the, yeah. the Colts, the Ravens, the Rams are just killing yep. us from a fantasy perspective. All three of these guys are just going to be like, you know, like you said, with Indianapolis, back to back to back in my mm -hmm. rankings. Like, it's just, it's gross. Cam Akers comes out of nowhere and leads this backfield and carries last yep. week. Henderson got the touchdown, but at this point, you can't trust any of them. Yeah, I have Henderson at 35, Brown at 38. So, like, I this is just something. And Akers, Akers is still down for me because as much as he led the team in carries and he led the team in yards, he was still pretty down there in snaps and he didn't find the end zone. I mean, Brown found the end zone, I believe twice and Henderson found it once. So I'd much rather start both of those guys over acres, but still they're like borderline and maybe outside of the range of flex plays for me. So is that around yeah, where you're I looking? Mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, acres 3.8 yards per carry last week and no targets, yeah. you know? And so, and again, uh, in this matchup against the Bucks defense, yeah, you're not looking their way. How about the wide receivers for the Rams? These guys also got downgrades for me this week. I've got Woods at 23 right now and Cup at 25. Yeah, uh, you really got to keep uh, both of these guys kind of grouped together. I've got Cup at 20, Woods at 21. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to come down by the time we lock uh, lineups on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Reynolds, he's been getting a ton of he work. Has. It's crazy. I know. And so I think looking at Reynolds, you know, from a fantasy perspective, we kind of want to plug him into our lineups as a solid flex play in this matchup. I don't know if I'm going to be willing to do. Yeah. That. I have Reynolds at 48 right now. Again, a guy who I, I want to roster for sure. You know, 48 is a guy who you can start. Yeah. I mean, that is, you know, right. essentially if right. you're a wide receiver four, that's like a guy who you might have to start as a flex play. But I'm not looking to do it in this matchup if I can avoid it. And you're not starting Goff or any Rams tight end in this one, right? No, stay far away from Jared Goff this week. How about the Bucks running game here? Are you you mentioned uh, Ronald Jones earlier? Where do you have him? Yeah, I've got Ronald Jones at 23. I've got Leonard Fournette slightly further down. Yep. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah. You can hear it in my voice. I don't want to start. No, Ronald Jones. I don't either. I really don't. I have him right now at 21. And again, classic. I don't want to start this guy, so I'm starting this guy. And Fournette at 28. I'm going to really try to evaluate this one. But, yeah, it's just ridiculous. And, again, last week, ridiculous. Absolutely nuts that that was how that played out. But, again, we'll have to see this week. But, yeah, yeah, I could see you being in a situation where you have to start either Jones or Fournette. I would just really hope I'm not there. Uh, how about the wide receivers? Again, this has gone from, you know, a situation where I'm like, yeah, I'll start these guys. I'll start these guys to the thing where – I'm starting them right now, but, you know, Godwin is at 22, Evans at 28, and Brown at 40 for me. Like, you know, I'm starting at least Godwin and probably Evans, despite, you know, the fact that the Rams just do not allow points to wide receivers. So how do you feel about them? Yeah, Godwin has the most favorable cornerback matchup this week against Troy Hill mm -hmm. out of the slot. So I think that Godwin is the one that if I were, you know, forced to choose, out of the three of them, I would be looking Godwin's way. I've got him at 22. Yep. I've got Mike Evans at 30, and I've got Antonio Brown at 35. Okay. Yeah, so we're right there. And again, this is the – you want to really, really think about what this matchup is. Godwin is does have the best matchup, and the Rams allow the third fewest points out of the slot to slot wide receivers. Like, that's how good they yeah. are against wide receivers. So it's not good, but I agree. I mean, we both have him at 22, so we're starting him. And uh, you're staying – where do you have Brady, actually? Where do you have Brady in this one? That's a real. I I can't figure out what to do with Brady this week. I'm so glad you uh, said that, by the way, because that's exactly how I feel. He has moved in my rankings so much already during this week. I have. I really don't feel comfortable with wherever I'm putting him. 
I've got him at QB12 right now. That's where I have uh, him, actually, so. as well. So. <laughs> So it really doesn't help our listeners at all because <laughs> he's right on that range where you're just like, I'll put him here. Right. Uh, I, I think you can get away with starting him, but not really excited to. With the matchup, It's re- this is going to be a fun game to watch. I can't wait to watch yeah. this game. But from a fantasy perspective, it's going to be uh, it's gonna be tough sledding for these, uh, these offenses. Yeah, how about Gronk? I mean, tight ends stink. Are you starting Gronk? Yeah, you, you start Gronk as a low-end tight end one because of his touchdown upside, but... Uh, at this point, you know, it's just based on the tight end landscape. You got to start. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You are starting Gronk and it is kind of gross, but you're doing it anyway. All right. That's it for today's show. Yates. I love Dan and Kyle in the morning. Don't tell tags. It's my favorite show to do. Uh, I hope everybody has a great week and enjoy. Remember, don't forget, check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fantasy pros, and make sure you tune in on Sunday mornings, 11 to 12 is tags live stream. 12 to one is Yates's live stream. And again, you can watch all our podcasts, a ton of videos on there as well. In the meantime, enjoy your week. Dan, yeah. Dan, Dan, Jameis Winston, release. No. No, I'm just God, kidding. you are the worst. You are the worst. <laughs> also, I have alerts for like 85,000 beat riders, okay? And I didn't <laughs> see that one, so darn it for fooling me. Okay, anyway, enjoy your weekend, everybody. Tags and I'll be back doing our Sunday night recap show, as always. Looking for useful content, fantasy-relevant information, and the data that can help your team win? Then make sure to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. And while you're at it, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Fantasy Pros so we can help you dominate your league all season long.